Hey, so Bryce Tubbs here. I wanted to come to you to share where to find bookkeeping clients. So this video is going to be a little bit different than what I usually do. I just got a new whiteboard, but at the same time I got a new whiteboard, I destroyed my webcam. So I'm trying to, um, to do two things at once at one time. So I'm using my computer screen, which is a little bit blurry in addition to a new whiteboard setup. So we're just gonna try a bunch of cool things and see what works the best and just kind of experiment. But nevertheless, the information is going to be excellent. Now, if you want some help, oh, I should probably put these two things the same height. If you want some help growing your accounting or your bookkeeping business, but you just don't exactly know what you need to do to find success, I should invite you um, to click on the link inside the description below to book a call with me to see if I can help you out. I'm on the call, I'm gonna take a look at like, where are you right now? I'm going to see where do you want to go. Then thirdly, if I think I can help you out, I'm just going to outline what that process looks like and we can talk about working together long term. So let's kind of jump into this thing real quick. So where to find clients? Let me adjust two cameras at the same time. So number one, okay, finding clients. There needs to be a couple of different ways that you think about getting clients in the traditional sense. And the first way is outbound. And in. This is actually the easiest way to think about marketing, to think about sales, and just think about like how to grow a business in general. Let me see if I can get this thing up a little higher. Cool. Number one, okay. So this is all about social media. When we say outbound, that means you're actually going and building relationships with business owners that can afford to pay you the prices that you want. Right now, not every single business owner is created equally, so you need to learn how to utilize social media to be able to get the right people to understand what you do and how you can help them out. Okay, a couple of ways you do that in your social. Number one is content. So that can be like written posts, that can be blog posts, that can be videos just like this. Now, keep in mind, like whenever I'm working with someone inside of the private mentorship program, like we don't really do a lot of content. Like we don't really write blogs. We don't really do anything like that because um, I have noticed that does take a little bit more time than what the average person does have. But if you're doing this on your own, content is not a bad first step. It's not a bad first step. OK, I personally like content long term because it allows you to be able to build an audience and hold trust with people who you know are going to end up paying you money long term. So content is generally really, really good. I like having content that agitates, educates, and indoctrinates. Agitates means it just finds their problems, their pains, and gets them to see, oh my goodness, this person probably helped me out. Like, I didn't even know I was going through that. But now that this person is really like clearly articulated what I am experiencing, now I know I have a problem. Okay, that's number one, it's agitation. Okay, number two is about education. Okay, so now they know they have this, this problem. What can they do to solve this problem? Like, what should they be doing to solve the problem? And it, for a lot of people, like you might be thinking, it's like it's, it's accounting, it's bookkeeping, it's virtually everyone should know how to do this. Everyone knows why they need it. Not necessarily. A lot of people don't actually understand why they need your help. And that's why you're making content to educate them, to show you or to show them how you can help them out. And it just happens over time and it happens with consistency. The last thing is indoctrinate, right? Indoctrinate means that you're moving someone over to your way of belief and thinking. So they actually start resonating with what you're saying and they start seeing you as the only person who can help them out. Okay, I love this. this these three eights are the things that makes it so much easier for you to grow a business. And again, it is a little bit more time consuming, right? If, if you have nothing else, except for you know content, you have no guidance, um, then yeah, content is good. But if you, you know, if you're working with somebody else, the number two, number two comes from virtual networking. So virtual networking, this is the one that we love using the most. Okay, it's just the simplest, easiest, most straightforward to actually go and to get clients very, very quickly, okay? So number one reason why virtual networking is super important, and I'm just kind of kind of um, 
just right underneath this. So virtual networking, remember one reason why it's super important is one, um, can identify targets. Right, so basically identifying targets means that you're able to go and find out who is the person that's going to pay me the most money. Generally, it's going to come down to what is their mindset? Generally, it's going to come down to, you know, how much buying power do they have? Number three, it's like, how do they see their industry? Number four, are they trying to grow their company? Are they trying to stay small? Number five, do I have something in place that is, you know, basically a competitor? If the answer to those is no, then it's very easy for you to kind of move in and close the deal very quickly. Number two with this is conversations. It's funny, right? A lot of people do not know how to have conversations. And I think they have like this large, just like large exchanges back and forth. So oftentimes what I see happening is most people will go like on LinkedIn or on Facebook and they'll type out this like large, just um, um, this large introduction. It's their entire elevator pitch. And it's like, no one reads that. You're basically just wasting your time and actually irritating the person because they don't feel like, you um, really care about them, right? Instead, you need to make your messages more conversational. That's like, how are you doing? Um, how's the weather near you? Where are you located? What inspired you to get started? Like just basic conversation um, steps to get the person to open up and just start talking to you, right? From there, number three, pains and problems. Okay, that's just having conversations, not only about them as a person, but also the business, like what's going on, what's going right, what's going wrong, what are the different things that we, you know, you guys can do together. Why are they looking for your help right now? And then once you have all those kind of like inside of the box and, and corrected, and you've understanding of that, then it's just about CTA and inviting them to the phone. Now, virtual networking is actually the easiest way to go and get clients really quickly, especially if you're shooting for clients between like 500 to about $5,000 per month. Um, for your kind of your business, right? So for example, like Lori, she was having so much trouble when we were first getting started with this because she, number one, she would be struck, she struggled with these two things. So she struggled with this and she struggled with this. So number one, she didn't really know how to identify who were the right targets, right? Who are the business owners that are gonna afford to pay me more money, right? Because she'd be talking like mom and pop shop owners or she'd be talking like with these online soap dispenser businesses. And there'd just be a lot, of, a lot of people who were not really doing that well. And they just financially just didn't have the budget to afford to pay her the amount of money that she needed, right? So the first thing was, hey, these are the kind of companies that actually can afford to pay you more money, right? Because it, it, it's, it's not very straightforward for the average individual, especially if you're just starting out. But then secondly, that we had to make sure that once she found out who those individuals were, she needed to know exactly how to get them to start talking about themselves and start asking her if she could help them out, right? And that just comes down to, I give you guys like a message script so you know exactly what to say. But once she started doing that, she got six clients in the span of about 69 days. And out of that, she was making about $8,600 per month, right? And all comes from this virtual networking approach, where it's once you know exactly what you need to do, you're able to start having conversations, you start building this network, you start having this like rapport with the market, who actually are going to work with you and, and hire you long term. And that's really the secret that most people just don't understand um, exists, right? And that's just outbound. That's not even like, that's not even the whole thing, right? The next step, so number two, is inbound. So this is all about getting people to come to you. The first one was you were going to them. This one's all about them coming to you, okay? Number one, influence. Um, partnerships. Okay, influence, influence and partnerships, so they're slightly different. So influence is a score that a person has with how they can direct people to move towards the thing that the influencer wants, right? Basically what that means is there's, there's certain individuals online and in person who already have your ideal client sitting inside of their pocket. Maybe they've been working together for months, years, decades, whatever, right? Or they've been friends or they've just been around the networking scene for a really long time, right? So when they tell people to go, generally people listen and they follow what the influencer says, right? And from there, it's just a matter of getting on the influencer's good side to get them to start sending you high quality leads. And I help you do that as well. 
Um, it is it is kind of a process, right? Because it's slightly different for each niche, right? Each niche, each niche is different. For example, for if you're working with like real estate agents or real estate investors, your niche. Bankers will be a good one, right? Bankers, people that can go, loan officers, uh, mortgage officers, credit repair people, those those would be the influential people. If you're going after cannabis, it would be, uh, I said, let's not talk about cannabis. Um, if it was more of nonprofit, grant writers are a good one. Um, nonprofit consultants, that's another one. And then you'd just be looking to go, who has an influence in each one of the stages and in each one of the spaces? Then from there, you just form partnerships with these people to get them to send you high quality leads, right? They send to you, okay? They just send the leads to you. And then you're starting to get this stream of people coming in, right? And the cool thing about that is it's a high quality close rate because of people already pre-sold on you. It's just a matter of price. And then when are they ready to move forward, right? And that's, that's really the main thing when it comes to how to find clients, right? You can go out to them or you can have them come to you. I personally like using both. Um, in the beginning, I like doing about an 80, oops, that's a sideways eight. I'm not left-handed if you can, if you couldn't tell. I'd be going 80, 20. And then, so in the beginning, right, I'm going about 80, 20. So it means 80% of my time is going to be spent outbound, 20% is going to be um, spent inbound. However, as I start getting more and more clients and I start growing my client base and start getting close to 10K, 15K, 20K per month, right? You're not going to have as much time to go outbound to the market. So it's going to be more of like 30% is outbound relationship building, 70% is inbound referral partnerships and people who are sending you leads. And that's that's really where, where you know my students have really seen the biggest benefit is being able to switch over time. For example, um, Melissa... Hernandez, when she was growing, she she literally focused 90% of her time on the inbound, right? She was able to get up to about $9,400 per month in the span of, it was like, it was in the span of like 40 days because she was able to go and get the right size people and the influence of people start sending her leads, right? And that that's really where the key is for most people, especially if you already have a number of clients or your time's a little bit sparse. And that's really the biggest thing, right? That's the biggest thing for how to find clients. Now, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Hopefully you've learned something from this video. I'm super excited that, you know, I was able to share this. It's kind of cool because we do have this whiteboard now. I've always wanted to have a whiteboard. Um, so, yeah. And also, if you want some help growing your business, right, I just invite you once again to click on the link out there above or below the video or maybe inside the comment section to see if I can help you grow your business. Now, it's not for everybody. Like, just to be honest, like, we're, we only accept a small portion of people because I only want to work with people who I know I can take to that next level. If I don't feel like I can take you to that next level, if we do our evaluation, we say, hey, it's just not a good fit at this moment in time, I'm going to be completely honest with you. But if I do think it's a good time and I do think that you're the right fit, I do think that I can help you out. I'll just make an offer. You can get started right then and there. And then we can, you know, work long term to hit your goal. So if that's you, I will see you inside of the call. If you're not quite ready yet, that's okay to keep watching some of these videos and I will see you soon. And I'll see you later. Have a great rest of your day. Talk to you soon. Take it easy.